flares are going off on Hill 16. No leaving the parade this time by either team. I can tell you I've spotted a change in the Clare team even before the match gets underway. It would appear that Fergal Hagerty is not about to play, and this man here, Niall Gilligan, who got the two points we mentioned in the semi-final win, would look to be in at top of the right. We were not told about it, and that the first surprise of the afternoon. We may have some news from Marty Morrissey on the far side. Some sensational news down here at the dugout because Clare have announced that despite the fact that they gave a fitness test early this morning, Fergal Hegarty seemingly has flu and will not play. Niall Gilligan went to meet Antishuk, Mr Bertie Ahern, and then he went to, in the parade, as you can see behind the Artane boys' van as I speak. Other news here from the sideline, Len Gaynor has erected a small stool in front of the dugout, so technically he's not in the dugout, but outside it. But what a sensational news flash indeed from Clare. Fergal Hegarty out, Niall Gilligan back in. OK, thank you, Marty. Well, those little green benches we saw at the beginning of our programme round about half past 12 today. And what a fantastic setting this is. Wonderful colour and spectacle. The blue and gold of Tipperary. Difficult to distinguish from the saffron and blue of Clare. But we know that down there in Hill 16, it's Tipperary support. The smile on the face there of Paul Shelley. So Clare pull the first rabbit out of the hat here by bringing in Niall Gilligan in place of Fergal Hagerty. So now let's see who has the, uh, the other answers to the various questions that must be posed. Who will win this 109th All-Ireland hurling final? And Clare will play against the wind in the first half. Neither side going into positions. They're both going for huddles. Will Eugene O'Neill, for instance, start on Brian Lowen at full forward? We're clearly not going to get the answer to these questions until after the anthem. The Great Famine of 1847. In memory of the many people who died here in Ireland, and in distant lands, let us stand for a moment's silence in prayerful remembrance. roar from the crowd the players take up their positions a hurling championship to equal other great season it's taken a bit of adjusting to we all knew the ground rules when they were made both managers vanished to the dugouts as it were but in the compromise the little green benches in front of those dugouts are meant to be where Gerlach Nan and Len Gaynor view this match from in the middle of the field it's Ollie Baker and Colin Lynch for Clare Tommy Dunn and Conor Gleeson for Tipperary. Tip will play from right to left in the first half. Taking charge of his third All-Ireland hurling final is referee Dickie Murphy from the Referees Club in Wexford. And the 109th final is underway. Straight away it's Paul Shelley.
That's Brian O'Mara sending one in there for David Fitzgerald to save. And Eugene O'Neill, incidentally, has started this match at full forward. Sean McMahon for Clare. Up towards Niall Gilligan. Michael Ryan probably felt he was uh, going to be marking somebody else, that somebody else should have been Fergal Hagerty. But they've made that change, of course. Now Brian Lowen. Had such a wonderful monster final. One of the stars that day for the Banner County. Here's Colin Lynch. Trying to get away from the attentions there of the man in midfield, Conor Gleeson. Back in again to the Clare backs. And again, Brian Lowen comes out first time to the ball. Liam McGraw was trying to take it up. It comes to Sean McMahon of Clare instead. Now Colin Lynch. Up towards Fergie Tui. Chasing after this one. One back here by Ollie Baker. He was being held back. Tommy Dunn was doing the holding. It's a free to Clare. Coming out to take the free, of course, will be Sean McMahon. Well, he got uh, two long-range frees in the All-Ireland final tier two years ago. This is about 50 metres out. Chance of the first score, but he's hitting into the wind. Gerald Lachlan has gone into full forward, by the way. McMahon hitting. Has it got the accuracy? It has. So Clare take the lead. Delight for the Clare fans up on the canal end. Fuck out to be taken by Brendan Cummins. Wind assisted, dropping towards the right. Anthony Daly over there, lets it go over his head. Liam McGrath for Tipperary. Just getting out of his way there was Michael Cleary. Again, it's Brian Lowen. Third clearance by Lowen, and the referee has spotted, spotted uh, some dangerous play. Speaking there with John Ratty, I think it was a chop down, which the referee was very quickly to spot. And the face mask this afternoon being worn by John Lahey, and that, of course, a legacy of the injury that uh, he uh, took in the semi-final win. Free to be taken by Sean McMahon. Lobbing it in towards the Sparrow at full forward. No shit, he bats it out, no hint of an injury there. P.J. O'Connell from the O'Callaghan's Mills Club, blocked down well. Michael Ryan trying to get that ball out, has it again. P.J. O'Connell going low to try and take it, but the referee says you were touching the ball on the ground. He's disappointed, it's a free out for Tipperary. So just a point between the teams. This free will be taken by Liam Sheedy from the Port Row Club, which I know has uh, the whole place in Port Row has gone absolutely hurling mad this summer. Just his third championship match. In towards John Lahey, puts up the hand. He's been marked this afternoon by Liam Doyle. That was swept away by Anthony Daly. Still in play. Tommy Dunn contesting there with Ollie Baker. That should be quite a contest. Anthony Daly trying to follow it up. Good wrist work there by Liam McGrath. Ollie Baker, second time of asking, some holding back there. It was Tom O'Bonner who was holding back James e. O'Connor. And there is the feeling, of course, that if anybody can mark James e. and mark him fairly and well, it surely is Con O'Bonner. Just a quick look at how Clare are shaping up at the forward line. James is on the right half forward position. Connor Clancy is on the 40. P.G. O'Connell on the left. Fergie Tui is top of the left, and as I told you, Gerald Lachlan at uh, full forward. Sean McMahon looks for another, but this time it goes to the right. Just Clare's first wide. He was man of the match, of course, in the All-Ireland final here two years ago. Both sides want to win this game so badly. John Lahey breaks it down towards Conor Gleeson, but it's swept up instead by Colin Lynch, up towards Ollie Baker, away to the left-hand side, towards P.J. O'Connell. Half blocked down by Liam Sheedy. Conor Clancy is trying to get onto it. Clancy rated the best man on the 40 that Clare have got. This is Gerald Lachlan, hooked well by Liam Sheedy. Still the sparrow going forward. 
Clare trying to make their customary good start to this match. Lovely pick up there by Paul Shelley, he really is in brilliant form this season. Foul as he was taking it out. Shelley's man this afternoon is, in fact, Fergie Tui. So it'll be Brendan Cummins from the Ballybacon Grange Club to hit this. It goes a huge distance down. Touchdown by John Lahey once again. Liam McGravel's coming into it. Eugene O'Neill trying to make some headway. Taken instead by Michael Cleary, and Cleary has knocked it over the bar. Well, that will do his confidence an awful lot of good. Getting Tipperary's first point in this match, and the sides are level. Six minutes gone. This is the move again. Cleary was very sharp, coming from behind. Lovely pickup. Economy of space and action. Ollie Baker. Declan Ryan couldn't take it. Colin Lynch instead in towards Niall Gilligan. Now to Gerald Lachlan. And Lachlan has put this one to the right. And a likely miss by Gerald Lachlan. He normally is most accurate. But those switches may well have been anticipated by the uh, Tipperary mentors. There was always the possibility that Clancy, following his good display in the semi-final, would start at centre-half forward. Touchdown by Sean McMahon, and Lahey was going through, and there was a stick thrust out that time by McMahon. The referee clearly saw it. Free into Tipperary. Lahey is up on the feet straight away. Great big roar up on Hill 16 by the Tipperary fans. This is what happened. Watch for Sean McMahon coming out here, and then striking across the Tipperary number 12. Free to be taken by Tommy Dunn from Tumivara. He makes no mistake. So Tipperary go in front for the first time in this match, and they lead by two points to one. Puck out to be taken by Davy Fitzgerald. Stiffish breeze against him in the opening 35 minutes. It lands right in the middle of the field, broken down by Ollie Baker. Colin Lynch one-handed, beaten by Conor Gleeson, but Gleeson unable to take possession. Sean McMahon instead. Colin Lynch once again. Added to there by Conor Clancy. Fergie too was challenging, but again it's the masterful Paul Shelley. He's made a good start. McMahon. Covering wonderful ground, right and left, assisting his wing backs. Liam Doyle, one of those wing backs. Taken up here by Brian O'Mara. Used to play midfield now, top of the left. Still O'Mara. What a great run. And he's put it over the bar. A great individual score by the man from Mulliner Home. Three points to one. Well, he went right through the Clare defence that time. That area of the field in which Clare are most solid, you feel. Fairly well tested in the opening exchanges here. And just 14 minutes gone. Or rather, nine minutes gone. Here's Declan Ryan. James e. O'Connor coming back. Declan Ryan, you remember, had a marvellous monster final. One of the successes for Tipperary that day. Connell Bonner hitting his pass into space, but there's nobody there. And that's gone harmlessly wide, and that will be a source of concern to the uh, selectors to make sure that when the wing backs get possession, that their, their distribution is accurate. So it's Colin Bonner, centre half back, Connor Clancy, centre half forward. Ollie Baker. One-handed there by Liam Sheedy. The shoulder coming in from Liam McGrath, a very sturdy player who can play on the 40 as well. Here's Anthony Daly, due to be married next weekend. Before that, this important tie here. Gilligan's first touch leading him down there, and it's Conal Bonner instead. James e. O'Connor in to try and dispossess. Liam Doyle getting it just as far as Ollie Baker, aware that he was about to be hooked. Back to Anthony Daly it goes. 
Sinclair's team captain fancying his chances from some distance. But he's put it to the left, and that's now a third wide for Clare. Well, Clare, I feel, will be quite happy to keep it nice and tight in the opening half. Tommy Dunn. Good delivery back in, over the head of Frank Lowen. Brian Lowen there to help out his brother. Who really is a great fullback. Ollie Baker was under that one, so too was Tommy Dunn. Picked up here by Liam Sheedy. No nonsense, clearance there by Anthony Daly. Back in by Declan Ryan, but that's gone just inches to the right. So the man who could certainly turn a match around by his sheer physical presence and uh, wonderful skill. Score of four points when the sides last met. Off the hands that time of Connor Clancy. Anticipation by Ollie Baker, coming bursting through the centre. An accurate shot and it's gone over the bar. Ollie Baker's first point. Just one between them. Fans here anticipating a rip-roaring contest between two very evenly matched teams. Baker was coming on to this with great determination and a very accurate finish. Puck out again, aimed down towards John Lahey. He's breaking the ball down quite a bit. O'Mara in after that, but it was a frontal charge rather than the fair shoulder to shoulder. Dickie Murphy decides. Well, this again is what happened. And Anthony Daly was coming across there and uh, got the full effect of that. Brian O'Mara being uh, spoken to by referee Dickie Murphy. Already the scorer of a very good point in this match. This, again, the incident, and uh, really he caught him quite high. It certainly wasn't a fair shoulder-to-shoulder charge. Dr. Porrick Quinn there, the Clare team doctor. He's been associated with Clare teams now since uh, 1990, I think. Daly's OK, there's a big roar. Jerry locked down on his feet. Lane continuing to sit on the bench, as per rule. Sean McMahon takes the free, towards Niall Gilligan. James O'Connor in next, touches it forward. And the ball was just over the line, the linesman has decided. Tommy McIntyre, the linesman on this near side. Big, big moment this for Niall Gilligan. He really starred in the semi-final and there was a big surprise when he was omitted in favour of Fergal Hagerty. But just in case you have joined us late this afternoon, live at Croke Park, Clare did make a switch before the match started, so they have not used up one of their subs already. Michael Ryan, great cut in, Sean McMahon was going backwards, touches it down, but only to the waiting Declan Ryan, should be a score. And the umpire has said no, but it looked to be just inside. That's a very close one. From this angle here, it looked to be just inside the right-hand post. And that's a source of debate and annoyance for the tip forwards. Dickie Murphy correctly going in to have a chat there with his umpires. And they have waved it wide. It doesn't count. This is it again. Sean McMahon, you can see, going backwards. All he could do is deflect it into the path of Declan Ryan. Now, did this go inside or outside? Difficult one to say. So tip continue to lead by just a point. Connor Clancy, good centre forward play. Now where will the distribution end up? It ends up nowhere because the captain Connor Gleeson got back. Colin Lynch, really tough challenge coming in on Colin Lynch, but he steps over the sideline. It will be a line ball for Tipperary. This again is what happened here. Ferocious shoulder coming in, and he was over the line, the shoulder by Lahey. Some tough exchanges in the opening 15 minutes of this game. The face of Connell Bonner. 
nicely cut up towards Declan Ryan. Touched down, however, by Liam Doyle to the waiting Ollie Baker. Sweeping it across to the left-hand side this time. Fergie Tui playing at top of the left, wearing number 11. Again, knocking it in there towards Niall Gilligan. That was battered down by Michael Ryan. It was a very important intervention because P.G. O'Connor was nipping in behind him. And here comes Noel Sheehy. The clearance to midfield, contested well by two strongly built players. Declan Ryan the winner, however. And racing away here is John Lahey. Should be an easy score for the taking. And it is. No doubt about this one. So the two men on the left flank of the attack from Mullinahone have now got their scores, and it's four points to two. Well, that was won there brilliantly by Declan Ryan, getting there ahead of McMahon, on to John Lahey, and that was routine by his standards. So let's uh, go down and join our reporter on the sideline this afternoon, Marty Morrissey. Well, Ger, I think that both county boards can be expecting uh, further fines because neither Ger Lugnan nor Len Gaynor have stayed even on the benches outside uh, the dugout. And uh, despite the best efforts to restrain themselves at various uh, times in this match so far, they have been walking up and down the sideline. Well, that was expected, I think. Michael Cleary back to Declan Ryan again. Where's the clear uh, marking? It was absent, and Conor Gleeson got in for his first point. So both midfielders for Tip have scored, and they lead by three points. This was where the move started. Declan Ryan taking the pass from Michael Cleary back to Conor Gleeson, and he drives it over the bar. Tip have made the better start in this match, no doubt about that. Conor Bonner. Their pride is very much, uh, I think, at stake here because they didn't want to be beaten by the banner twice in the same championship season. Early days yet. Colin Lynch for Clare coming in and putting it over the bar. All of the midfielders have scored now and it's five points to three. Clare just the happier on this particular occasion. Lynch getting well away from Conor Gleeson. And a great score. Brendan Cummins pocking out. Anthony Daly touches it down ahead of Liam McGrath. Tries to advance. Getting it up second time in towards Declan Ryan. Lovely pick up by Declan Ryan. The hand pass forward into space. Eugene O'Neill unmarked momentarily. The youngster just out of the minor grade. Brian Lowen trying to get his clearance out. It comes out towards Tommy Dunn. Chance of a score here. He did the right thing. Picked it up well and drove it over for his second score and tip lead by double scores. Well, it's been a very satisfying first half so far for the Premier men. They really were tormenting the Clare backs. That came out to uh, Tommy Dunn. Just a quick look up and he popped it over. The concern on the face of Ger Lachnan, very, very evident. And I think we can forget about the regulation of having to sit on the green bench. Conor Clancy mishit that one just as far as the man they call fingers P.G. O'Connell who breaks his stick Gerald Auckland trying to get it up it's with Ollie Baker instead out to Jamesy O'Connor looking for his first score in this match firing it in but it's well saved by the Tipperary goalkeeper Brendan Cummins back out towards Ollie Baker each side having its moments in midfield that's swept back by Daly for McMahon into the corner towards Fergie Tui trying to open up the Tipperary defence Paul Shelley getting a stop on it but the ball has gone out over the end line and it's gone wide well certainly too he adds an extra dimension to the Clare forward line when he's able to take his place but it's strange to see him playing at top of the left if anything Clare have uh, maybe four players in their forward line who are much happier playing in the half forward line that's well caught again by John Lahey it really is causing problems for Liam Doyle that came off the post and went outside and wide and it's a fourth wide now for uh, Tipperary John Lahey a little annoyed with himself David Fitzgerald then having a particular plan in mind with this puck out through the centre Colin Bonner was the first to react to that. Now the other centre-half back, Sean McMahon. 
It's back from Baker to Daly. Good ball forward towards Niall Gilligan. Connell Bonner got there first. Little uh, needle there between Colin Bonner and James O'Connor. Meanwhile, the sparrow from the angle drive has put it to the left. And that's a fifth wide by Clare. Clare not functioning as well this afternoon as they have done so often in the championship in the past. Referee is calling for attention for Connell Bonner. Just caught the stick there, I think, of uh, James e. O'Connor as he was racing for possession. And the referee just waiting for the team doctor, who is uh, Jerry O'Sullivan, to come on. Jerry was reminding me before this match that he was booked in the semi-final. I think one of two doctors to be booked this year in the championship. So Connell Bonner has to go off for attention. Connor Gleeson has gone back to play left half back just while Tipper down to 14 men. The puck out goes towards Declan Ryan. Liam McGrath trying to pick it up. Back to Anthony Daly again. James e. O'Connor trying to get more into the game. Has come out towards midfield. Across to Niall Gilligan has switched across to top of the left where he's marked, of course, by Paul Shelley. His first shot really goes right into the arms of goalkeeper Brendan Cummins and the referee says you can't do that to the goalkeeper inside the small rectangle so it's going to be a free out for Tipperary. Brendan of course, hurler and footballer, very accomplished wing forward with the Tipperary football team. Free out towards Liam McGrath's side. Baker sweeping it through the middle. Connell Bonner back in the action again after the attention from the doctor. Connor Gleeson against Colin Lynch. In comes Ollie Baker. Good distribution to uh, PG O'Connell. Going for the score himself. He usually gets a couple in a match, but that time has gone to the left. The Clare forward line not really functioning as they can this far in the game. Brian O'Mara taking Michael O'Halloran out of position. Cross towards Liam McGrath. You can see the Tipperary have done their homework very well since the Munster final. They're a much improved team. Even as, even as we say that, they put one to the right. Five changes in all, remember, from the day they played Clare back in early July in that Munster final down in Porky Cueve. And they've had the opportunity to change things around with the wins in the league and also a quarter-final and semi-final All-Ireland wins. Tommy Doyle. That's Anthony Daly. In towards Gerald Auckland. Connell Bonner. Niall Gilligan in there to try and deny him. Tip doing more or less as they will in many positions of the field, but not down there. Brian Lowen playing superbly as ever. Sideline ball is to tip. Well, I think Clare will be very disappointed to have scored only three points after nearly 24 minutes play. Chances few and far between. Fergie Tui has now gone out towards the right half forward as Clare tried to switch things around. They've left just two men in the inside forward line, incidentally. Great catch by Declan Ryan. Wonderful distribution out to Lahi. The old firm are at it again, and that's gone over the bar. John Lahi's second point made for him by Declan Ryan, and it's seven points to three. How often these two have done it in the past for Tipperary. Almost indestructible there at centre half forward. And the free-moving Lahi sweeps it over the bar. Davy Fitzgerald pucking out once again. He's been very busy in the first half. Over the head of Colin Bonner that time. Colin Lynch, the midfielder, first touch, unable to take it up onto his stick. And then belted away by Connell Bonner. Sean McMahon outside towards Colin Lynch once again. He had a chance just there moments ago. All in there after it. Tough physical confrontations. Tommy Dunn 
getting it out as far as Eugene O'Neill. Fast off the blocks that time. The shot by O'Neill has gone over the bar. The first time he's been given a chance to hit a point by Brian Lowen. He takes it splendidly. That was a great point. Very, very happy fans of the Premier County just now. Hoping to make amends. That ball was hit down in there to Eugene O'Neill. He got fast away from Brian Lowen. Good positioning by the full forward. Great score. Liam Sheedy. Ollie Baker putting it back in for Clare. Who have looked somewhat disjointed in this opening half. The attendance, by the way, this afternoon, capacity, 65,576. And the triumvirate from Clare have a lot of work to do if they're to get back into this match. They must be considering a switch or a change. Sideline ball hit in by Liam Sheedy. Past Declan Ryan that time, but that time he was fouling his man, who is Sean McMahon. And we've got some further news now from Marty. The news is that Fergal Hegarty is coming into the side and the uh, decision has yet to be confirmed about who exactly is coming off, but we would anticipate a switch possibly at midfield. Well, it's difficult to understand how he wasn't fit enough to start and now maybe coming in after just about 27 minutes play. Sean McMahon is taking the free for Clare. And again, it's Connell Bonner. The two Bonners have been playing very well. Out it comes to Tommy Dunn. The race here involving Brian Lowen and Eugene O'Neill, and O'Neill is proving a tough competitor in the last few minutes here for Brian Lowen, who had started the half so well. Tipperary get the free in. And is there some further news from Marty? I wonder just before this free is taken. Just a very quick word, Ger. Uh, Fergal Hegarty is coming on, and it's Fergus Tuhi that's coming off. So. Fergal Hagerty comes on, gives the little slip of paper there to Dickie Murphy. And as you say, Fergie Tui, the player who has been taken off. But Fergie Tui, in fairness to him, looked out of sorts and out of place at left corner forward. Tommy Dunn taking the three, and Tommy knocking it over the bar. That's three points that Tommy Dunn has scored. Well, they've helped to advance Tipperary's case in this particular final. The old Munster final, tip lead by nine points to three. A first ever for these fans to watch two Munster teams play in an All-Ireland decider. Our tip to get their revenge. Liam Doyle again. It's John Lahey who's causing him all kinds of headaches, but that time Lahey was holding back the Clare number five. So free to the bannermen. John Lahey gets himself a new stick. John Hayes, one of the officials, was in there to give it to him. Anthony Daly. No she breaking it out towards Connell Bonner. Ollie Baker trying to advance through midfield. And there was a wild hurley there thrust out. And the referee is speaking with Connell Bonner. The referee was right up with the play, as always. Arguably the best in the business. Of course, last Sunday he was a selector with the Wexford under-21 hurling team. James e. O'Connor hitting this. Oh, almost for a moment he was hitting it low and it very nearly crept in. But off the stick of Brendan Cummins and over the bar. That's James e. O'Connor's first point. Five between them. There was a low enough trajectory on this. Just watch it again. Nobody but the goalkeeper on the line, and he forced it over the bar. Huge puck out once again, that's causing problems with the wind at their backs. Tipperary having this lead of five points. Colin Lynch, he won't be without hope. P.G. O'Connell, there's a man in support, it's Fergal Hagerty, the man who didn't start this final, but was picked to do so. In towards Niall Gilligan, two Tipperary players there, however. Still Gilligan. Familiar stride, trying to go around the defence here, hitting his shot and putting it over the bar. Niall Gilligan's first point, and Clare have started to play. Four between them. Still five minutes to go to half-time, and they're a great deal happier now. It was the 
leggy figure here of Niall Gilligan who was getting away from his man Brendan Cummins pucking out Baker was under that's a wonderful catch up it goes towards Gilligan's corner once again he's top of the left he's on Paul Shelley an angle shot and that's got over two in a row for Gilligan how could they ever think of not playing him it's nine points to six and he's having a little word there with Paul Shelley this is what happened again he was fast there off his marks got there ahead of Shelley who never got in a telling challenge or a challenge of any kind in fact and the referee has had a word with the two men towards Liam McGrath runs on into the corner Michael Cleary about to put a challenge in on his man there Frank Lowen good clearance by Lowen Tommy Don to pick it up here for Tipperary Brian O'Mara trying to steal inside there Brian Lowen trying to get that ball away somehow Michael Cleary trying to pick that ball up couldn't quite link up with his captain but it comes off uh, Conor Gleeson's legs back towards Brian O'Mara again trying to go through that's Frank Lowen hooked all in after it picked up by Lahi trying to go through there's no way through that stonewall defence that has settled down a great deal more as they watch scores going over the bar at the other end broken down here by Michael Ryan Conor Bonner leads it to the Sparrow beyond Fergal Hagerty on towards Gilligan picked up here by Jamesy O'Connor 45 metres out Jamesy sending it to the right three minutes to go to half time pulsating stuff here up and down the field so much to enthuse about so much energy expended scoring chances so far almost equal Tipperary at 12 Clare with 11 down towards Declan Ryan most of the stuff is coming down through the centre there out to Lahi again he'll have to be marked a great deal tighter and that's the end result another point three for John Lahi ten points to six well that time his marker who was Liam Doyle was well away from him this was scooped out there by the number 10 Liam McGrath out to Lahi it was Colin Lynch in fact who was coming in Doyle was well away from his man and that's another score David Fitzgerald pocking it through the centre towards Ollie Baker back in by Tommy Dunn indications there from that puck out that the breeze is very very stiff indeed and remember it is favouring Tipperary in the opening 35 minutes Brian Lowen trying to keep Eugene O'Neill away from it in was McGrath quickly in along the baseline it comes Liam Doyle there saying leave it to me the clearance out to Colin Lynch the shoulder from Conor Gleeson strong tough forceful play but full of skill full of craft Clancy trying to go through there it really is a tough match this and who's back the number 12 inevitably John Lahey what about that for a pile up you get an indication of that last little bit of play of just their eagerness to win this tie so much pride is at stake Anthony Daly again blocked by Colin Bonner taking it away from Conor Clancy hasn't yet managed to get into this match as Clare would wish he's done a good job so far Colin Bonner free to tip Tommy Dunn to take it inside the last minute of the first half tense faces all around Croke Park well, this is just about 50 metres out from his own goal but he has the wind behind him, lobbing it in towards Eugene O'Neill. Lohan was up first as well, but well, that ball beats them all. Ryan Lohan there explaining it away to the referee and I think explaining that his hurley may well have been held. The only player I can remember giving him real trouble during this past season was uh, Eugene Clunan of Athen Rye in the club final here back on St. Patrick's Day. Inside it goes towards Fergal Hagerty. Hagerty playing it left half forward, being marked by Liam Sheedy. There he is again. Up towards Niall Gilligan, playing at top of the left with a score of two points in a row for Clare to begin something of a comeback for them. So into injury time. 
I suppose the question to be asked is a lead of four points sufficient for Tipperary, who will have to face the wind after the turnaround. Sean McMahon has left it there. That's Conor Gleeson, Tipperary's team captain. Will he be picking up the McCarthy Cup? That's Eugene O'Neill. He really is causing problems just now for Brian Lowen. Into the arms of Davy Fitzgerald. The ball goes, however. Jamesy against two Tipperary players. Colin Lynch coming in to help him. On his left-hand side, across towards Fergal Hagerty. Getting there ahead of Liam Sheedy. That's a good switch and a good move. Here he comes again, the man from Kilnamona. Outside towards P.J. O'Connell. Instinctively hitting it, but he puts it to the left. He got just a little chance. It was just a brief opening there for him. This is the gap that he saw, the hand pass. Hit it on the ground. And just wide. So how much time is the referee going to allow at the end of this first half? That's it, he decides. Plays just over a minute of injury time. Well, John Lahey scored three points in that first half. Declan Ryan was very much the provider for many of those scores and many of the other scores as well. Tip will be happy going in. Are they to avenge their loss in the Munster final? At half-time here in Croke Park in the 109th All-Ireland Hurling final, it's Tipperary 10, Clare 6. The battle for the greatest prize in hurling gets underway once again. 35 minutes to go. Aidan Ryan has gone into right half-forward where Liam McGrath had been playing as that ball has gone over the bar. What a start to the second half. Wow. Ten points to seven. Liam Doyle will be mighty happy. This is what happened. The man who was marking uh, John Lahey in the first half and continues to mark him came in to get a very rare point in the championship. And there the fiancé of the team captain. Hoping that uh, things will go well. Eugene O'Neill again trying to take that ball up into his stick. Brian Lowen had a real test in the last 15 minutes of that first half against uh, the young full forward Eugene O'Neill. This time a great long clearance downfield. No Sheehy put under pressure. Fergal Hegarty racing across for this one with uh, the team captain Connor Gleeson. And it's going to be a line ball for Clare, who have this breeze with them now for the second 35 minutes. We can confirm that Liam McGrath is the player who's gone off, and Aidan Ryan has come on. Colin Lynch. In it goes towards Clancy, the man on the 40, looking for another point, start of the second half. Clare have made a wonderful start to the half. Connor Clancy operating on the 40, two between them, ten points to eight. And this is how it happened. Very much an individual score by Clancy, making space for himself. Well, Niall Gilligan is top of the left still. There's the new fresh man in to try and challenge Anthony Daly. The Sparrow continues at uh, full forward, and PJ O'Connell, it seems, is now the man playing top of the right, which uh, is not the position you associate him with. Conor Gleeson, quick look around to see who might be marking him. Nobody. Probing ball inside, Cleary, in he comes. The backs did really well. Frank Lowen got there first, and then it was his brother Brian. A wonderful clearance downfield to put pressure on the Tipperary backs. P.G. O'Connell was challenging Ryan that time. No Sheedy inside, Sheehy inside there. And that's got over the sideline. But with Sheehy's and Sheedy's in that uh, Tipperary back line, it can be a bit confusing at times. Pressure back on the tip backs again. I'm sure they were expecting a bit of a hurricane from Clare in the second half. And certainly Clare have started with a great purpose. The line ball will be cut in by Ollie Baker. Words of encouragement from the tip goalkeeper. Right into the inside forward line, but uh, they're powerless to get it, however. So that's the first wide of the second half, and ten wides in all now for Clare which is also a cause of concern. Claire wondering, can they get a second title in the space of three years? Tip looking for their 25th All-Ireland success, the last six years ago. In their challenge, it was Tommy Dunn. 
Clancy was there for Clare. Oli Baker trying to make some headway. Sean McMahon says enough of that and drives him way down to Niall Gilligan, but he can't win his race, however, to take possession. And a tip man down on the ground there. Just looking around, uh, possible elimination. I wonder, is it Tommy Dunn? Again, the team doctor in there, Jerry O'Sullivan. Yes, it's Tommy Dunn, all right. Scorer of three points in this match so far. Two of them from Freeze. Back on the feet, able to take up his position in midfield. He's formed a very good alliance there with Conor Gleeson. There's been quite a test against Baker and Lynch this afternoon. This was where that came back of Tommy Dunn, and that's where he got the injury. Some fresh air pulling in there. Strong, determined, forceful hurling. Tommy Dunn has it. Lose it, however. Back by Sean McMahon. Into the Sparrow. Sparrow has uh, yet to score in this match. Playing it back towards Fergal Hegarty. Again, it's Gerald Ockland. Good probing ball by O'Loughlin. And it's gone over the bar. Gerald Ockland's first point. One between the teams. The rematch of the Munster final. In this, the All-Ireland decider. The biggest day of the year for these hurlers. That was a great shot and a great point. Puck out taken by Brendan Cummins. Pucking against the wind. He still makes a fair old distance. Stalemate situation over there. John Lahey was trying to take it. And he ends up on the ground. And the referee in there quickly to defuse it. It's a fiery contest from time to time. No quarter given, and as you know, none ever expected. Especially players who know one another so well and where they've already met in the heat of battle. Free to be taken by Tommy Dunn. Two successes with threes out of three so far. Low trajectory again, but the accuracy is there, and he's put it over the bar. A fourth point in all now for Tommy Dunn from Tumi Vara. And Tip get their first point of the second half. Well, that will soothe a lot of the Tipperary nerves, I think. Six minutes into the second half, lots of talking points, but no goals to date. Davy Fitzgerald. A much longer one this time. Noel Sheehy and Colin Bonner there between them. They break it down. James O'Connor was coming into it, but he was being held back. And that will be a free into Clare. And the referee speaking there to Colin Bonner. And Dickie Murphy, who plays the uh, game with a great smile on his face always. Explaining it away there to Colin Bonner. who took a knock in the first half. It should be James O'Connor's second point of the game. It equals his tally in the 95 final. So a margin of just one separating these teams again. What a contest. The packed Hill 16 in the background. The backdrop to this puck out by Brendan Cummins. Trying to vary it towards Aidan Ryan this time. I'm sure he's trying to limit the effectiveness of uh, Anthony Daly. With those booming clearances, that's Colin Lynch way down there. P.G. O'Connell racing across from the right to pick it up on the left. Send it inside there towards Clancy. And back goes Connell Bonner. And that's no Sheehy there. Out into the middle, it's picked up here by Ollie Baker. Good vision to pick out Colin Lynch, 45 metres out. Should be another one, and that's gone over the bar. It's the equaliser. A second for Colin Lynch. Clare 11 points. Tipperary 11 points. Not showing any great emotion there on the uh, bench over there, the Clare mentors, but they must be very pleased. They were four points down at half-time, and they've now got another. They're fifth of the second half. That's wonderful shooting, five points in eight minutes. That's a bit like the old Clare. John Lahey, this time beaten by Liam Doyle, has started much better in the second half. McMahon trying to link up with the other wing-back. Does so successfully, out to Colin Lynch. Sending it over the head of the Sparrow towards Niall Gilligan. It's won here by the fullback for Tipperary, Noel Sheehy. Sweeping it into the middle. Tommy Dunn taking it. Ollie Baker right alongside him, saying so, saying so tight to him. Declan Ryan. And the race here won by the man at the corner, Frank Lowen. One back here again. 
and that time the foul was by Gerald Auckland and the referee calling him aside there for that foul on Connell Bonner. Quiet little caution by the referee, no name taken. Free to tip. Hands on the boots there of Liam Sheedy. The man who is making the most of his opportunity this year, called in first in the championship against Down in the quarterfinals. On what is a perfect surface here at Croke Park this afternoon. A really good one in towards Aidan Ryan. Back out again by Daly, however. Only as far as Declan Ryan. Blocked down by Sean McMahon. Playing well. Ollie Baker back. Ollie's having a fantastic game. Over the head there of Sheedy. Running on there towards Gilligan. Fergal Hagerty and Niall Gilligan. Gilligan has it. Gets it away from Paul Shelley. Claire, if I'm accurate in this, have been ahead just once in this match. The very first score, which was taken by Sean McMahon. No addition to it there. So, all tied up here, Len Gaynor again, pacing up and down the sideline. Jerry Nan right now is sitting down, the man doing the walking for Clare, as it were, is Tony Considine, one of the selectors. But it's difficult to stay sitting down while this kind of action is taking place in front of you. Eugene O'Neill, again, tormenting Brian Lowen. Every chance he gets, oh, that went just too far beyond Brian O'Mara. Michael Cleary was coming in, but Tommy Doyle is there as well. And Tommy Dunrother has put it over the bar. Five points in all now for Tommy. And Tip go back in front again by 12 points to 11. Well, that time they were tormenting the uh, Clare back line. It was Eugene O'Neill doing much of the tormenting. And when it went out to the midfielder, Tommy Dunn was on hand. Dunn again. Challenged by Colin Lynch. Clancy there challenging the other man, Conor Gleeson, unable to take it up onto the stick. Liam Doyle was across there, and the shot in the end has gone to the left and gone wide. Eugene O'Neill having to be content with the point he scored in the first half, just one so far. But every opportunity he gets, he's getting in there among Brian Lowen, and uh, it's difficult for Lowen to dispossess him. Tony Considine, Mike McNamara also there, the other man who is a selector for Clare along with Gerlach Nath. That's swept out there towards Ali Baker. We'll have some more news in just a moment from the sideline as Colin Lynch comes onto this. The hand pass outside towards Jamesy O'Connor. And Jamesy's shot has gone over the bar. Jamesy's got another one. And they're level for the third time. It's Clare 12, it's Tipperary 12. And I think news of a change by Clare. Marty. Clare going to bring in David Ford from Agunalo, but uh, again, they would not uh, confirm who exactly was going to be coming off. Well, the man is coming off is PJ O'Connell. We can see it now as that last point is credited to James e. O'Connor. Well, David Ford, of course, the man who came in in the Munster final against the same opposition and scored a goal. That goal, which was the one which separated the teams in the end, it was 118 to 18 points at the end of that match. James e. O'Connor on to the sub has just come in, David Ford. Ford was a super player, looking for glory straight away. Perhaps we put the kiss of death on his chances that time, he's put it away to the left. Well, he's come in at right half forward. And James e. O'Connor, I think, has gone out to the middle of the field. We'll just have to see once this settles down what positions they take up. This is Ford again. They're unsure, I think, the Tipperary backs as to who's supposed to mark him. And the referee saw no advantage accruing. He blew his whistle and now going in to have words. Words with Colin Bonner. Now playing his club hurling in Dunhill and Waterford and he gets his name taken. Deliberately stopping... Uh, David Ford as he was going through might have been an advantage that time but the referee decided to blow it'll be a free to Clare James e. O'Connor two frees taken two points scored this is third and he's put it over the bar and Clare go back in front it's Clare 13 points Tipperary 12 in this wonderful All-Ireland final It really is some battle. But then as the out goes, nobody said it would be easy. 
and the referee has blown his whistle because Len Gaynor came onto the field there just to try and make a change and it's difficult for the mentors, the managers, the coaches to get their words of instruction across to their teams because there is some distance from there to the edge of the pitch and he is uh, certainly not happy Mark Duggan there on his right and of course the other man there alongside him, Michael Doyle Puck out then to Tipperary, Brendan Cummins Aidan Ryan getting there ahead of Anthony Daly for once towards Michael Cleary, lovely pick up by Cleary instinctively hitting it inside towards Brian O'Mara broken down however, that's the wing back, Liam Doyle driving it down towards Niall Gilligan's corner picking it up there alongside Paul Shelley who's trying to get that stick in there to dispossess the Wiley number 18 who does well trying to get it across to the Sparrow, one back by Shelley again James O'Connor contesting with Conal Bonner out it comes to the man in the middle, Tommy Dunn Brian Lowen getting out first time ahead of Eugene O'Neill linking up with his uh, wing or centre half back Sean McMahon towards Conor Clancy doing well trying to shield that ball comes back towards James O'Connor darting away again from his man and Liam Sheedy this time was hauling him back Liam is annoyed with that but the referee had uh, no option and it's a free in to Clare just look at the pace of the man here a real penetrating run well, Liam Sheedy certainly felt there was no fouling action there, but uh, the referee saw it otherwise. And this time the referee sending Gerlock Nan back towards his bench. Difficult afternoon for the two coaches. Two men who shared glories in the past. And that's gone over the bar, draws the white flag. And James O'Connor now with five points to his credit. He's having a good afternoon. When that ball comes his way, he knows what to do with it. So Claire leading by two points. Sean McMahon reaching up for this one. Doing well in the second half. Indeed, much, much better against Declan Ryan. Ryan was uh, very influential in the opening half. Now wind assisted. It's Ollie Baker hitting it. A huge one from way out, but away to the left. Certainly seems to be enjoying himself this afternoon. Ollie Baker from uh, St. Joseph's. And Baker in his ninth championship match this afternoon. Daly trying to knock it down. Comes towards Aidan Ryan. We'll have some more news in a moment from the sideline. In it goes towards Michael Cleary. But Brian Lowen inevitably back there to help out his defence. Towards Connor Clancy. Touchdown by Colin Bonner. Connor Gleeson playing it ahead towards the man in the middle, Tommy Dunn. Clancy, good dispossession. Away come the Claremen once again. Leading by two points. Hagerty sending it in. It's two against one. Michael Ryan goes up for that one. And a sweeping clearance by Ryan. The team captain under it there, Anthony Daly. Towards Clancy again on the 40. No Sheehy dispossessed, but assisted there by Conal Bonner. Oh, he gives it straight to a Claremont, to Ollie Baker, who has support if he needs it. Ups to go with David Ford, rather than the Sparrow. Ford having to chase after with Michael Ryan. The other option of the Sparrow might have been the better one. A wonderful phase of continuous play. Good block down here. Ford again, hitting his shot, and he's put it over the bar. A delighted David Ford. This is a great second half spell by Clare, who lead by 15 points to 12. And this is the score, but where was the marking? They were late going out to meet David Ford, far too late in fact. Well now, what about that news from the far sideline? Just a uh, talking point down here between the two dugouts is the wind, or indeed the lack of it now in the second half. John Lahey with that shot saved there by David Fitzgerald. Connell Bonner trying to get there, so to his brother Colum comes back out towards Connell again. So the wind has dropped, so that advantage to Clare not as great as it might have been or as we might have thought. It's Connell Bonner who's down there. Nine points in the second half for Clare, which is wonderful scoring in 18 minutes. So a point every two minutes. This was John Lahey's shot, that was the save made by David Fitzgerald. The in-goal camera. 
Again, the doctor has been called out here to attend to Connell Bonner. And the referee also availing of the liquid. Here was Connell Bonner, and that's where the wind was taken out of his sails by Ollie Baker. But not a fair shoulder-to-shoulder -shoulder charge, hence the free to Tipperary. It'll be Tommy Dunn to take it. Five points so far in this match, standing on his own 65-metre line. 16 minutes to go. Dunn's shot. Appears to be going left. Stopped by the goalkeeper. And it's gone for a 65. Declan Ryan actually sent it back quickly. Michael O'Halloran there disagreeing with the umpire. And David Fitzgerald, the player on the ground. This was what happened. That was that long-range free. And the uh, goalkeeper was called on there to make a save. And in the end, it was over the uh, end line. Hence the 65. Tony Considine, will he be singing my uh, lovely Rose of Clare after all of this, like he did back in 95? Clare by three. This an important 65 by Tommy Dunn. Dropping it in low. Saved on the goal line by Liam Doyle. He really has upped his performance in the second half. He had to do so. And we've seen very little of John Lahey. Very little of uh, Declan Ryan as well. This is Michael Cleary. And certainly Clare have gone for it in the second half. James O'Connor. Down it goes. Again, Ford coming forward. Looking for another one. Great pace. Little off balance. He was hitting it, but he puts it over the bar. And it's two points now for David Ford. 16 points to 12, the scoreline. Well, Clare are so fortunate to have a player in their ranks like this to come off the bench to take two of about four chances so far. That the latest. It's a great score. And at the other end, watch for this. Saved on the goal line by Liam Doyle. It's back in again, however. This time it's David Fitzgerald getting away from Brian O'Mara. Tip thought they have this match won, I'm sure, heading towards the end of the first half. Clare looked ragged, but there's a bit of transformation in the second half and a great display of character and skill. Here's the Sparrow, sending it in low towards Niall Gilligan, could have gone anywhere. Causing problems for Paul Shelley. Colin Bonner got back goal side, still Gilligan. Just about got enough room to swing the stick and to put it over the bar. And that's his third point in this All-Ireland final. The man we thought had been omitted, but started the game, has made it 17 points to 12. They're on the feet, in the stands, on the terraces, enjoying this moment here again, which they can see on the giant screen above Hill 16. Tip may be about to make another change. We'll tell you about that a little while from now. But that's Liam Doyle. Into the waiting goalkeeper's arms, Brendan Cummins. Fergal Hagerty trying to take it up here. Little hand pass back towards James e. O'Connor. In towards Niall Gilligan. This is the Sparrow. Oh, and that's gone to the left. He had a chance of a point, and he might have even have had a chance of a goal. Some more news now from Marty. Liam Cal is being introduced uh, for Tipperary, and obviously he's going to take up the corner forward position. And there's been a lot of talk in Clare, of course, about the three men along the sideline, Barry Murphy, David Ford, and Niall Gilligan. Ford and Gilligan are in. Barry Murphy will be introduced very shortly. And he's coming in in place, or rather Liam... M Michael Cleary is the one going off, just to clarify all that. It'll be Liam Cahill, of course, who's, in fact, now just come in. Daly once again, momentarily on mark. Cattle was going in there, did well to dispossess him. He's got support outside if he wishes to use it. Aiden Ryan, another second half sub. Here comes Aiden Ryan, going by Frank Lowen, still Ryan. He was fouled. It'll be a free in from the 20 meter line. And that will put a bit of hope back into these Tipperary players. A good run forward. Aiden Ryan, the man you can depend upon in a crisis. Still no goals in this match, and they have been so important in the past in major championship occasions. Is there one in this? David Fitzgerald on the goal line, organising. John Lahey has gone to uh, get the ball. Score of three points in the first half. Nothing so far in the second. He goes for the point. 
first of his four to come from a free, and four between them as well. Tension again on the face there of Gerlach Nahn. I make it about 11 and a half minutes to go. Fitzgerald's puck out towards Fergal Hagerty. Ford is coming in behind him here, the shoulder by Liam Sheedy. Picked up here by David Ford again. He'll go for another one, I'm sure. This time, however, it's gone to the left. Perhaps uh, an easier chance than one of the ones he scored earlier on. The umpire looking at his watch. I'm sure they're wondering as well just how much time is left. That was a view of the Clare bench. Sean McMahon again makes a, a wonderful catch, surrounded by three or four Tipperary players. In the end, they foul him. And the referee explaining why there to the new man in, Liam Cahill. David Fitzgerald has come from his goal to take this. Look at the size of the head of that Hurley, the boss. It's the pucking out uh, stick that he normally uses. And it'll work a treat, I'm sure, from this free here. Breeze we heard earlier, not quite as strong as it was in the first half. He's standing 45 metres out from his own goal. He really hits it a crack. Going for a score, and he's gone just to the left. Very remembered of the, for the great penalty save in the last match, and of course the great penalty goal that he scored in the Munster final back in 95. And Clare have just made the change that we were anticipating. And going off the team is Fergal Hager, who's had a, a checkered afternoon. So Barry Murphy up from Scarif is in. And Fergal Hagerty, who was due to start and didn't, and then came in, it was all a bit confusing. And Dick Dickie Murphy straight away is having a word there with uh, Barry Murphy, who's going to be marked by Liam Sheedy for the remaining just under 10 minutes. Lahey again over there contesting, gets the break of the ball back down to him from Tommy Dunn. John Lahey looking for his first score of the uh, second score of the second half. In it goes towards Cahill and he's kicked it in! There is a goal in this match! The sub has done it! A goal by Liam Cahill. And Tip are right back in it again. They're in there disputing this one, however, about whether or not he was in the square. Let's watch again. He was just on the edge, I think, when he made the catch. It's a difficult one to call, however. It was John Lahey who dropped it in. In towards Liam Cahill, right on the edge, but he booted it to the back of the net. Now, where was he when he received it? He could have had half a foot inside. But the goal stands, and there's only a point between the teams. What a finish we're going to have now. A goal that would surely set up Tipperary for a wonderful last eight minutes. Carl Baller trying to get that one away. David Ford trying to get it in. The Sparrow being kept away from it there by Michael Ryan. The All-Ireland title is at stake. What odds a draw. 14 to 1, the bookmakers were telling us. That's Conor Gleeson. Up towards Brian O'Mara. Stepping in there again was John Lahey. And Lahey seemed to just... Uh, Injure an ankle momentarily, he's walking away okay once again. Last man up, Michael O'Halloran. O'Halloran also seems to have uh, taken a knock on that ankle. This is what happened here, he was racing there with John Lahey. Well, Claire, of course, now have introduced their full complement of subs. It'll be Liam Doyle to hit this one. Good sideline cut towards James O'Connor. Clancy was there, but so too was Michael Ryan, the cornerback for Tipperary. Connor Gleeson, that's Ollie Baker, working tirelessly in midfield, trying to get it back to Sean McMahon, succeeds. Barry Murphy once again, stepping away from the challenge there. Aidan Ryan going back, three Tipperary players, they feel they can still take this cup back to Tipperary. Brian Lowen wants to deny them the minimum between the teams, 17 points to 16. Frank Lowen again, 
and him thundering out of his full-back position. Michael Ryan, again a good catch, quick look around him to see who was there, Shelley was in support. The clearance, will it find a temporary man? It's gone for a sideline ball and Cahill would seem to have pulled across Anthony Daly there, right alongside the umpire, or the linesman rather, and the referee certainly spotted it. Quite a little word, and a line ball it's going to be. This to be taken by Anthony Daly. Where will that McCarthy Cup be going? Will it be going back to Clare or Tip this afternoon? Or will there be another day out? James e. O'Connor has it for Clare. They need a score here just to settle things down. And James e. has found the range. Six points now for James e. O'Connor. This is a day he's certainly enjoying so far. 18 points to 113. Two points the margin. Clare lead. Just over five minutes to go. That was a great finish. In it goes again, this time towards Brian O'Mara. Back they go to try and challenge him. Sean McMahon gets it out somehow to a player waiting out there. Liam Doyle is there. Swings around, then knocks it away downfield. Beyond Colin Bonner. David Ford can't pick it up. Michael Ryan has it instead for Tipperary. Great a short corner back play. In there towards the forward line again. They're looking for another. O'Mara was there. Aidan Ryan is there. Eugene O'Neill's in there. Who might get the final touch? It's gone off a clear back. And it's gone for another 65. What a match. What a finish we're getting here. And that is what it's all about. This is what happened just moments ago there. Eugene O'Neill was trying to sweep it in. So too were the other players. O'Mara was there. Aidan Ryan was ready to pounce as well. And in the end, it went off a clear stick. Tommy Dunn, three points from six frees so far. Sherlock now is on the field and the referee is, is waiting before the free can be taken to uh, have a word with the Clare manager. Um, his name is being taken. Sherlock Dan won't care too much about names taken or fines later on if his side can hang on for dear life to victory here. This to put just a point between the teams. Real pressure for Tommy Dunn. Five points so far in this match. Four minutes left. He drives it in and he drives it and it's stopped in there. And it's in the back of the net! Another goal! And it's Eugene O'Neill who's got it! Tipperary are ahead by a point. They were hoping to narrow the gap. Tommy Dunn knocked this one in for the side, beaten in this year's Munster final by Clare, and Eugene O'Neill was the one who reacted quickly. Three minutes from the end or thereabouts. A real body blow now for the Banner men. But even as we watch the replay of that, they've gone downfield, and Ollie Baker has put the ball over the bar for his second point. It's a wonderful contest. They're level for the fourth time in this All-Ireland final. How much time will the referee allow? Another three minutes still to play. Will there be a winner? What a final. James O'Connor goes back to try and forage. Tommy Dunn there, who hit in that free at 65. In towards Eugene O'Neill, the scorer of that goal. To Cahill, who got the other goal. Back it goes towards Liam Doyle. If there were to be a replay, we gather it would be in three weeks' time. Aidan Ryan, who certainly has made a difference, making some very good penetrating runs in the second half. Always a man you can depend upon. And one of the Clare players just needing a little bit of attention. The referee, I think, has told Michael O'Halloran there are about two minutes to go. Liam Doyle back to take up his marking duties on John Lahey. Tip the better in the first half. Clare the better in the second half, but those goals have been real body blows. The free out to be taken here by Davy Fitzgerald. Is there another score or two yet? Colin Bonner under it, so too Sheehy. Comes out here towards Conor Bonner. Into the middle of the field, Declan Ryan there. 
he picks it up really well ahead of Sean McMahon. Still Declan Ryan trying to send it in towards the forward, towards Eugene O'Neill. And again, it's Brian Lowen. And very craftily there taking it away from the forward, giving himself a bit of space in which to manoeuvre. Out to Liam Doyle it comes. It's a wonderful All-Ireland final. Full of spirit and determination, full of skill, full of craft, full of all that's the very best in hurling. And a very fast game at that. Liam Cahill, Colin Lynch, a couple of players there to help him. Keeping it away there in spite of the bloody nose. A minute to go. James e. O'Connor, will this be the winner? It may be! James e. O'Connor! His seventh point and clear lead by a solitary score. They are absolutely thrilled and delighted, those Clare fans, all around Croke Park. This, the reason why. What a response to the goal. Here's Lahey at the other end. It's stopped, it's saved. It's a great save by Davy Fitzgerald. And there was a chance for Tipperary to go back in front again. Amazing stuff. It's gone out over the sideline. That was a wonderful save by Davy Fitzgerald. There was wonderful pace in this. Struck straight towards him. But still, a wonderful save. Well, what a time that would have been for Tip to have come and got their third goal. Instead, it's going to be a sideline ball. Five seconds or so of normal time to go. Neither team would really deserve to lose, but Clare had the edge. 27 scoring chances created by Clare, 25 by Tipperary. David Ford, stopped here by Colin Bonner. The hand pass to Conor Gleeson, trying to tie up this match. The captain from way out the field, he's gone to the right, however, with the shot, and he's put it wide. So now down to referee Dickie Murphy from Wexford. How much time is left? We had some injuries. There should be a minute or two. David Ford under this one, getting there ahead of Liam Sheedy, sending it across towards the Sparrow. Michael Ryan racing out there as well. The tip forwards needing possession badly. Again, a real hard, tight contest there in midfield, just to try and win it back. The referee's decision here will be keenly awaited, he's going to... Uh, it's all over! Clare are the All-Ireland champions once again! Champions in 95, champions in 97. They've beaten Tipperary twice in the same championship season. What a championship. They beat Cork, they beat Tip, they beat Kilkenny. They've come back and they've done it again in the All-Ireland final. They were in a tight corner when Tip got those goals. But they are absolutely thrilled and delighted. They've won by the minimum. It's Clare, 20 points. Tipperary, two goals and 13. Just one point between the teams after a magnificent All-Ireland final. Clare will celebrate, I'm sure, for a long, long time now. And we've got Marty Morrissey. Sherlock Nan. Probably your proudest moment. Well, the first thing I'm thinking about now, would you believe, is Len Gaynor, you know, because I know Len so well, and to see the disappointment in his face going out there, I genuinely feel really sorry for him because he was a great friend of play and a great friend of mine for two years, and somebody had to lose today. In what was, without doubt, the greatest game of holding I have ever seen. An epic, epic All Ireland final of real quality holding. And those people who said before the game that it'd be a dirty game, it'd be a physical game, were totally wrong. This was epic holding at its very, very best. Holding was the real winner. I know we have the cup going home. I'm not going to go over even to the Hogan stand you can see because I'm in such a state of shock after the, uh, after the quality of the game. It was holding beyond belief. But for Clare to beat Tipperary twice in the one year, it is extra oh, special. Nothing to do with it. There's nothing to do with it. Right now, that has nothing to do with it. All that has to do with it now is the quality of the game of holding we'd have to see. The Clare one is great. We without Camley and Cooley, we came back from this five points down. There's another day to reflect on that. But for now, I'm just reflecting on what we'd have to see in here. One, the greatest, I would say, the greatest game of holding I have ever seen. An epic, epic All-Ireland final. And what a game holding is. And I'm delighted this game is going out all over the world.
so that people can see just what this mighty game of hurling has to offer. There is no game, no game in the world like the game of hurling. Sherlock Nan, congratulations. Yes, an absolutely delighted Sherlock Nan. And I'm sure the lovely Rose of Clare will be getting a lash from Tony Considine very shortly. Well, these Clare fans here, they were saying in the build-up to this that uh, this year, because of the success in 95 and the acute disappointment the year afterwards when they lost to Limerick, there's Jim uh, McNamara there, by the way, Jim McNerney, rather, former Clare star, so many Clare stars, but the fans, I think, were anticipating that nothing less than All-Ireland success was uh, what they wanted. And Anthony Daly has delivered. He gets married at the end of the week. He takes the cup today. Probably one of the proudest moments in his young life. The Taoiseach is there. So too Joe McDonough, the president of the GAA. As Jerry Lockdown says, it was epic stuff. Only a cynic, I think, could find fault with anything that we've witnessed and enjoyed this afternoon. Marvellous entertainment. Committed play by players who don't get a penny for playing this great game. Noel Welsh there, the Munster Council, Clareman as well, already celebrating. And here in Agasad Fulham down. Elvor son, Maroktaran, and Homan Lok last scale. But Walum, Buyakas son, Homan, a Horanul, Don Da Eden, a Hoxar has spawned to Samaniakta. Skilling a stadula on Cliffedo in your new. The Honda and Clark is the Hebridarin, Coramila Mahagiv. Hogar to her special to Le Conde and Clark. Lost Stadul do shoot. Go crave the head and crave the minor. I just crave the shinchen. A dull heart shunner. Go Conde and Clark. But while I'm playing a special to a rival, the Colt Guinness, as of the day of the Gazanian club on show, the Stuart Banished Yachter, Sean Holiday, playing a schema, the Sean Maltor, the Stuart Maragall against the Mayor, a Cowrilin, and the Rocky and Leonio, a Jerry Hill, playing a uncommon, the Lock Lanona, common low class scale. A hot taki of Dar Vornia, a star Nimrodi in Toka, a Rick Neblina. Marshin, Gana Helia Mulla, and a lost Tadul shot on a maniac. Brunnen, Karan Vicarhe, and Captain Boga and Claude, Antona O'Dali. Joe McDonough makes a rousing speech. Anthony Daly takes back the Liam McCarthy Cup. Claire are the champions. Champions of Ireland once again. What a magnificent day for them. Young and old will celebrate a famous victory. Just a point in it. But what a game. And they'll always remember it. Tishuk. Walked around coming low class scale. Pana son down orum. And current Liam McCarrick shot. Her son Fernimani as Kundi and Clar. No little honour to accept this Liam McCarthy Cup on behalf of the people of the Banner County. <laughs> it, is, it is indeed fitting that in this year of 1997, the 150th anniversary of the birth of another great Clareman, the great Michael Cusack, that we accept this cup. Nineteen ninety-seven will also be remembered as a historic year. It was the year of the All Monster Final. And we say now to February, we have always respected your tradition and your great Your great tradition and your list of honours. But today we are delighted that we can finally compete on an even level. The 
all the people, if all the people that were due thanks by me were thanked, we'd be here all week and we need to get back to Innes. But a special mention for our sponsor, Pat O'Donnell and the Clare County Board. To all, to all our medical people who helped us throughout the year, but especially to two, to Colin Flynn and Dr. Patrick Quinn. To the wider panel of players, it just wasn't 26 people here that we had today. We had great men who trained with us all year. And on behalf of the panel, I'd like to thank those players now. But finally, for the second time in two year, in three years, we owe great thanks to three great men, Considine, Mac, and the great Lockland. That song, second time in three years. Oh, my love, the rose of Claire, you're the sweetest girl I know. You're the queen of all the roses, like the pretty flowers that grow. You are the sunshine of my life, so beautiful and fair. Celebrating well they might. What a scene. What a party they'll have.